Hello and welcome to another episode of The Pulse. I'm your host, Sam Red. We have a wonderful show today. We have the folks from MAD, Mothers Against Drunk Driving. And you don't want to miss this show, so don't go away. Stay tuned for The Pulse. Welcome to another episode of The Pulse. I'm your host, Sam Red. My guests today are the folks from MAD, Mothers Against Drunk Driving. I want to welcome them to the show. Welcome. Thank you. So we have, we have Jan Withers and Lisa Spignell from the organization. And I'm honored to know that, uh, that both of you are here, but you're our national president for MAD. Uh, tell us what you do, how you got involved with MAD. Tell me all about MAD. Well, I became involved with MAD when, uh, 20 years ago when my 15-year-old daughter, Alyssa, was killed by a drunk driver. Mm -hmm. And indeed, that flattened me, sure. and I was just so broken. And a few months into it, I thought I was going crazy, and I picked up the phone and called Mad. Mm -hmm. And the person on the other end of the phone was just this beautiful spirit, right. and uh, she saved my life, I feel like. Sure. But she just reached out and just hugged me right through that phone. Um, as a result then, um, I was able to function after a while, and she went to court with us, mm -hmm. and. She was a shoulder to cry on. She just did everything sure. for us and was just a wonderful person. Is a wonderful person. I was just talking about mm -hmm. back then. But she's a wonderful person. Right. Um, so as a result, then, I wanted to give back to MAD mm -hmm. um, what I was received and, and helped me um, become functional again. Mm -hmm. So I, I asked if I could be trained as a victim advocate. And I was, and so since then I've been able to support hundreds of families right. since then. Right, and now you're the national president. Yes, yes. We'll talk about how that happened in a few minutes, but Lisa, tell me what you do as far as the, uh, the Maryland chapter. Okay, I am a program manager for MAD Maryland, and mm -hmm. I'm in charge of our underage drinking and our victim services programs. Okay. Um, what we do essentially is with our underage drinking program, our biggest push is our Power of Parents program, which mm -hmm. is our parents to reach out to the youth to speak to them and help educate them on the dangers of underage drinking. Mm -hmm. And then our victim services program, we work with actual victims of impaired driving crashes. Now tell me about your victim service program. What do you, what do you all do? Who's involved? Sure. Um, how do you get to be a victim service person? Absolutely. Um, in Maryland, we have about 10 volunteer victim advocates that okay. are active currently. And that's um, for the whole state? That's for the whole state. Okay. We do have one staff advocate um, who is on staff um, regular full time. Mm -hmm. And what we do is when an impaired driving crash call comes in, we work with the victims. We help them fill out paperwork. We can help them find a civil attorney, um, anything that they may need. And it varies from case to case. It's not always the same thing for each case. So sure. it depends on that family and what their needs are. We can go to court with them. Um, we can help them get a better realistic expectation of what the outcomes of court cases are and can be. and just. Essentially, it depends on the family. Sure, sure. Now, uh, Jan, what is the, the mission of state and national um, MAD? What is, the, what is the goal in your mission? We have a three-pronged mission. Mm -hmm. So it's first to stop drunk driving, to right. eliminate this. Right. And the second is to support the victims of this crime. And the third part is to prevent underage drinking. How do you stop drunk driving? Is, I mean, is that, is that actually possible? You know, it is now. Mm -hmm. In fact, um, a few years ago, I find I was getting so discouraged. I felt like all the work we were doing, I was just beating my head against the wall and bleeding and nothing ever changed. But now with our ca new campaign to eliminate drunk driving, mm -hmm. I know that in our lifetime, we're going to see a country without drunk driving. Okay. So the campaign has three prongs. Mm -hmm. And the first prong is to uh, support high visibility law enforcement because we know um, like the sobriety checkpoints, sure. you know, where they drink, drive sober, or get pulled right. over. That really deters people from mm -hmm. driving drunk, and it reduces it by about 30%. Okay. So, and the second part is to require ignition interlocks, those devices that people blow into. Right. 
require that for all convicted drunk drivers. So not just repeat offenders and not just those with a high blood alcohol concentration, but starting at a .08, the mm -hmm. illegal limit, uh, requiring that in every state for all convicted drunk drivers. In the states that have it, um, they've reduced their drunk driving fatalities anywhere from in the high 30 percent mm -hmm. up to 46 percent. Let's talk about this device. Um, this device is, is can be put in any kind of vehicle. Yes. Um, and and if someone is um, convicted, and the court orders them to have this device, uh, who pays? Who's responsible for making sure that device gets put in the car? The offender. The they, they're, they're required to pay for it. Okay. Although in Maryland we do have a uh, an indigent mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. fund, and um, if they can't afford it, then money comes out of that indigent fund. Okay, and, and, and Lisa, is yes. your uh, victims advocates? Are they just mothers? Are there's any? Is they there anyone? Can we be? have mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers. It's anyone. Anyone who is open and willing to become an advocate. And and what kind of person do you want when you when you have an advocate? What are you looking for? In a, it's, it takes a very special person to be an advocate. You don't necessarily have to be a victim to be an advocate. Mm -hmm. You have to be understanding. You have to have a little bit of a tough skin because a lot of times what we go up against isn't the easiest. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to just want to genuinely help people. Now, uh, we talk about uh, drunk driving. Mm -hmm. What if someone is a victim of an, uh, other drugs or, or um, other things that impair a driver? They can absolutely call so us. So they can definitely reach out to you absolutely. all. Absolutely. All right. Jane, you talked about the person that reached out to, uh, that you reached out to, um, and obviously that person had a, a strong impact on on you during a, a very trying time. Um, if you'd like to mention that person's name, uh, but when you when you reached out to that person and you made that phone call, I'm sure you were devastated. Is that the kind of person that you're looking for when you, is this a person, like a model of what you want other victims advocates to be? You know, she is. Her name is Annie Powell. Mm -hmm. And she has since retired and moved to a different state with to be with her daughter. Okay. Um, but um, she is exactly the kind of person that anyone would want to have in their court. Okay. Um, just this very kind person. but. Straightforward, also, mm -hmm. um, not mincing words, not sugarcoating things, which is really important because when a person has been victimized by a crime, uh, we need to know the truth about mm -hmm. what's going to happen. Right. And so she didn't sugarcoat anything, but she still had that kindness and that understanding. Mm -hmm. Now, will you go the whole route with the family? And how do you get your victims? Um, do, does the police department recommend at an accident scene or something? Do they do they pass out information about mad or what? What happens? How do you get a victim? We get it from a lot of different avenues. Mm -hmm. um, we read lots of newspaper articles. Mm -hmm. um, anytime there's a mention of a possibility of drunk driving or impaired driving, we will follow the case. Okay. And sometimes you can tell by a crash whether you know. Usually, um, the norm is two thirty three o'clock in the morning. If there's a crash, right. it's normally impaired or alcohol or drugs. Uh, we'll follow the case. We do a lot of research. Um, we get families that call us, mm -hmm. and then we do work with some police agencies and state's attorney's offices mm -hmm. that will give us information to reach out to families. Now, now, what if that person doesn't realize or doesn't know that they can reach out to you all? Do you all reach out to them also? As many as we can. As many, um, you know, we rely a lot on public information, mm -hmm. so if it's not in the white pages and we can't find them, we will go through the state's attorney's office, through the police department to see if they will pass on our information. Okay. Um, and we do get a lot of assistance All with right. that. I know you got a couple campaigns, the Power of Parents pan, mm -hmm. uh, campaign. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about those things. Okay. All right, don't go away. You don't want to miss this episode of The Pulse. Hello, and welcome back to The Pulse. If you're just joining us, my guests today are the folks from MAD. When we went to a break, we were talking about the uh, campaigns that you have, and you have one in particular, which is the Power of Parents campaign. So, uh, so tell me about the Power of Parents campaign. This is a, a wonderful uh, campaign that we have called the Power of Parents. What we learned, because um, it's so important to reach our teenagers, our youth, mm. um, about and talk to them about the dangers of underage drinking. Right. What was interesting is that um, the research shows that talking to them and reaching out to them and the programs that we have in the schools are not effective in reducing the underage drinking. Mm -hmm. But what is effective are parents' influence. Um, did you know that three out of four, three out of four teenagers say that their parents are the number one influence on their decisions about alcohol? So our fear that the peer pressure is so much stronger is mm -hmm. not necessarily true. 
So what we learned with um, Dr. Robert Cherisi, who is a professor at Penn State University, mm -hmm. he's done 20 years of research on this, and um, he has a, a method of talking with our, our children about the dangers of alcohol, mm -hmm. and it's very effective in reducing the underage drinking. So we have a program called The Power of Parents, and um, it's a booklet, and it's also a program that takes maybe about 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, they can also find it online at mad.org, M-A-D-D.org, mm -hmm. -D um, but it talks about how parents can communicate with their children about the dangers of alcohol, about family values, um, boundaries, consequences if they violate yeah. those boundaries. But the key, which I found very interesting, is to talk about it frequently. Mm -hmm. Not just say, well, I told them and they know how I feel, right. but frequent communication about it, and that is really a key factor. And Lisa, don't, yes. in this some, some cases you have to almost scare the kids into knowing what the consequences would be. I mean, I, you, you, you you bring a crashed wrecked vehicle out and sit in front of the high school campus right before the prom season. I mean, don't you almost have to force it in on, the, on them sometimes? You know, a lot of high schools reach out to us to get the crash car and to right. do that. Unfortunately, just studies have shown that as soon as the kids walk away from that, mm -hmm. it doesn't work. Okay. They, they forget about it. It's just, it's out of their mind. That'll, it's the mentality of that'll never happen to mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you with the Power of Parents program, my children are a little young for it, eight and 10 but I still use it. Right. And I use aspects of it to talk to them, and they will tell you how old you have to be to drink, that you should never get in a car with someone who's been drinking, mm -hmm. um, that if someone has been drinking, you know, you should take their keys, try and find a safe ride home. They know this at eight and 10, and it's because of the program. It's because I started talking to them early, and one of the biggest things I tell people, the program isn't about teaching you how to be a parent. Mm -hmm. It's simply about talking. That's it, just opening the lines of communication with your child and saying, Here's what you should and shouldn't do, but it also gives you a way to say that. But now let me just talk about the fact that in so many households, children see alcohol, mm -hmm. and they see the the adults using it right. frequently. Um, so I mean, how do you 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 you, you do everything? away from the home with children, mm -hmm. and you enforce all the, the things, the do's and don'ts, right. but yet they go right back into that environment where they love and trust and, and are cared for, and that's that comfort zone, and they see what you're telling them not to do. Is that what the, the power of the, of, of the parents' uh, campaign does with the parents also? It, it can, yes. It can hopefully, I mean, it does talk about drinking around the children, mm -hmm. and it, it goes into a lot of detail about a lot of different, um, aspects of the program and things that should and shouldn't do is kind mm -hmm. of um, just ways to talk to them and ways to express to them you know you, you don't want to you always want to set an example for your child sure, sure. and I think that's it I think we're not against a drinking mm -hmm. when sure. you're uh, 21 and above sure. um, but I think parents have the opportunity to show responsibility and so when when children watch their parents doing that responsibly in the home mm -hmm. then then they are modeling um, Another interesting little piece that I found interesting is that um, many parents think that if they, that in Europe and other places that there's no age limit to drinking and so they learn how to drink at an early age and, and so they don't have a problem. Actually the opposite is true mm -hmm. and they really have a serious problem yeah. with binge drinking with sure. youth. But um, they, we also know that in homes where they uh, give their children some alcohol in the home, mm -hmm. and they're teaching them what they think to drink responsibly. The, it, again, the data shows that when those children are away from home, they drink more alcohol and in larger quantities more frequently than the children who have the other message. Mm -hmm. So what else is going on great at the, uh, with Matt? You're all busy, but what else is going on? Well, you know what else I want to tell you about that excites me, and this is why I feel like I'm not beating my head against the wall anymore. Um, uh, part of our campaign to eliminate drunk driving is research okay. for advanced technology. Mm -hmm. This is so exciting. Um, it's called DADS, mm -hmm. Driver Alcohol Detection System for Safety. But I love that it's DADS, you know, right. like MAD and DAD. Right. Um, but this advanced technology, um, just like the cars do so much now, sure. they park themselves. Sure. Well, this, uh, there are two prototypes that are being researched. Uh, one is touch-based, mm -hmm. and so when the person sitting in the driver's seat gets in the car um, and they touch the steering wheel or perhaps the starter button, the car will instantaneously 
accurately and precisely every single time in a nanosecond uh, tell how much alcohol is in that person's system and if they're above the legal limit. This mm -hmm. is not the same as the ignition interlocks. Sure. But if they're above the, at the legal limit of a point oh eight and above, the car won't function. It won't be, they won't be able to drive it anywhere. It would actually start, but it won't function. That's one prototype. Then the other prototype is um, breath-based. So there will be uh, laser beams, actually, positioned throughout the interior of the car and on the steering wheel, triangulated on the driver, and instantaneously be able to tell how much alcohol is in the person's system. So they're just sitting there breathing. Uh, and if they're above the legal limit, the car won't function. And see, that, that, that amazes me, first of all, that that technology is out there. But what amazes me also, I don't think that people realize that MAD is not just a bunch of mothers right. shouting and, and raising signs right. and campaigning, that you all are getting involved with some serious things with, mm -hmm. with, with legislature and Congress and, and with the auto industry and everything else. So, I mean, you don't ever want to mess with mothers anyway. <laughs> but, uh, but I think that uh, people don't realize just how advanced and how much work your organization is, is doing. Um, is, and it's that, you all have chapters in how many states? Every state. Every, every state. state. Every, every state. state. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk more about this after we take this break. Don't go away. You don't want to miss this episode of The Pulse. Welcome back to The Pulse. Uh, when we left, we were talking about all the different things and the great things that are going on at, uh, with MAD. I'm just so impressed at, uh, at, the, at the hard work that you all are doing. Um, let's talk about some of the, uh, the fun things that you all do with, uh, with MAD. Let's talk about events and, and fundraisers and um, how anybody can give money to you and everything else. So, so what, what, about, what kind of events do you have to raise money? You know, we just, um, we do, we depend on people's donations. Okay. That is the sole source of our income. So um, we here in Maryland just finished our Walk Like mm -hmm. Mad and Lisa okay. led us in that walk. So mm -hmm. tell us about it. Uh, we just on May 11th had mm -hmm. an outstanding turnout. We had 542 walkers and 43 walk teams, which okay. has been our largest in Where seven years. Federal Hill Park, Okay, right, right here. So we walked around the harbor. Walked around the harbor, we did, um, over to the lighthouse and back. Mm -hmm. um, Largest walk event we've had in seven years, mm -hmm. um, and it was a fantastic turnout. We had a great day. Weather was a little questionable, but you know what? Sun came out, yeah. shined for us. Okay. So we do that every year, um, mm -hmm. right around the same time of year, beginning of May, um, and that's our largest fundraiser right now. That's our only fundraiser, mm -hmm. um, but we are always looking for donations and any way that anybody can help us. Um, so if I'm sitting home watching this show right mm -hmm. now and I say, wow, I want to write a check to MAD, uh, mm -hmm. how, would I, how would I call you or how would I reach you out to you all? call us at our office. We're located in Columbia. Mm -hmm. um, our phone number is 410-964-5757. Mm -hmm. And you can talk to me. Um, and then we can work out how uh, to get that to and, us. And, and on, 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 the, uh, on a more serious note, uh, mm -hmm. if I'm watching this show and I am a victim, how would I uh, reach you all? Is there, a, if I want to read about you, where would I go to read about the organization? You can, absolutely. You can go to our website, mad.org, mm -hmm. um, and there's a list of all of our local offices. So if it's someone's online watching this and they're not mm -hmm. necessarily in Maryland, um, we have advocates in all 50 states. Um, but you can reach us at our office again at the same phone number, and we have a victim advocate who is there or myself can help. Now, Jan, do you all have a national meeting every year? Uh, Oh yeah, we, a national meeting. We have it um, a national conference. Mm -hmm. We have it every other year. Okay. But I do want to say that people who are victimized by drunk driving sometimes they're not just distressed right. during nine to five hours, you know. And so we mm -hmm. have a twenty-four hour helpline right. that people can call, and after after that person, they ha we have trained people that are there twenty-four-seven, mm -hmm. and then they will connect you the next day with people in your area. But that number is one eight seven seven mad help So mm -hmm. it's M-A-D-D, help. It's a great, great, wonderful helpline. Okay. Right, you, you know, this is this is graduation prom season. Um, kids are having a great time. The proms are out there having a wonderful time at their proms. And you know they're going to be tempted and there's peer pressure to, uh, to get out there and uh, have more fun than they, they should be having. Uh, what do we want to say about that as far as... Uh, kids and alcohol and, and proms? Well, we want to tell kids that there's lots of ways to have fun that mm -hmm. doesn't include alcohol. And certainly um, it's dangerous mm -hmm. and uh, to avoid it 
and certainly don't get in a car with anyone who's been drinking also. But it's so important for them to know that it's not just um, that they're invincible, but it also affects the brain, the younger brain, mm -hmm. and it's just not healthy for them. So we want them to be sure um, to have fun without alcohol. Sure, sure. Tell me who your par some of your partners are. Oh, gosh. We, we have wonderful partners. We partner yeah. with National Highway S Traffic Safety Administration, mm -hmm. um, AAA, Governor Highway Safety Administration. Um, NFL. NFL, we certainly do. Okay. Well mm -hmm. said. That's exactly right. NFL um, has partnered with us also, and uh, we work with them um, a we work month with ago. The National PTA. National mm -hmm. PTA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other organizations that we could think of? At the NFL, um, you know, the dangers of, of the, the players and, and all the things that wow. happened. Um, our CEO and I went to, went to uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and spoke with all of the owners, all of the coaches, and all of their wives. And uh, they are taking that back to their teams, and we also have pe people in local areas talking to the teams. You know, uh, I, I, I'm so impressed at uh at the work that you are doing, and I've, it's been an education for me this morning to know that the, uh, the great things that you all are doing. Recently, I had Mothers Against Guns on the show, yeah. so there is great power in mothers who are who are uh, angry about a situation and want to see things get done. And your organizations are constantly growing. You get a lot of attention when when mothers get together and uh, and and ensure the fathers are there to support the mothers, but. Um, this organization has been around for uh, for a while now, but you're doing wonderful things. And to find out and know that you're doing so much as far as technology and uh, and, and fighting with the folks over in Washington to get the bills passed, um, I want to thank you for the work that you're doing. Um, Lisa, I'm, I'm so glad that uh, that you were able to come, but I was e even uh, more impressed that you brought me the national president <laughs> this morning. But you are doing great jobs, uh, and, and we want to also thank all your victim advocates for the work they do mm -hmm. and uh, and your organization as a whole. So those people, I'm sure, are, are on the front line making sure that when That's somebody right. calls, they're the ones to make sure everyone gets help. So congratulations to your organization. Thank you very much for coming on the show. And I'm sure there's a whole lot more we could have talked about. So you got to come back and, 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 uh, and talk more about things that are going on. Okay? Great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. Don't go away. You don't want to miss more on The Pulse. I want to thank my guests today, the folks from MAD, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, for coming on the show and sharing all that great information. And as always in parting, stay safe, stay informed, and keep your finger on the pulse of our community.